I like photographing people that I find interesting. And I like photographing people that haven't really been photographed a lot. And if I could photograph normal everyday people and make a great portrait out of it that is humanizing and people from other cultures would like, I feel that I am succeeding in a different way. There's a lot of people that could shoot the obvious ugliness of, of any culture. That's common, but I think what is important is to show what's human. So people can feel connected to these people. When I started shooting film, I was shooting 4x5 sheet film. And when you composed the image in that ground glass, it had to look perfect. Everything in that frame had to look right. And if it didn't look right, I wouldn't shoot it because it's a waste. Like, why shoot something that doesn't look right? Sometimes I'd be working out in the west side, you know, and people would tell me, oh, I live in Beverly Hills. I live in Santa Monica. I live in uh, Playa del Rey. And like, I just tell them, I say, I live in the ghetto. But I kind of laugh, you know, and I say that, and they, they don't, they say, oh, no, you don't. And they say, where do you live? I say, well, I live in Boyle Heights. And they don't really know where that is. And I, they're like, well, where is that? I say, well, that's the east side. And they say, well, where is that? Like La Brea? I'm like, no, it's actually east of the downtown, east of the LA River. And they're like, there's an LA River? They don't even know this, you know? When I started photographing my East Sider project, it wasn't a gang project, it was a community project. But if you leave out anything about the gangs, it's, uh, it's a misrepresentation. A lot of people familiarize East LA and Boyle Heights with gangs. And that's just the way it happens to be, and that's the way it is. Not everything's about Cristal Champagne and Dom P Champagne and Bugatti cars and stuff, you know I mean? It, that type of thing um, is available to 0.005 or, or less percent of the country. And a lot of these kids, a lot of that is not tangible to them. I mean, I gotta say, a lot of these kids probably don't play high school sports, or they're not in college sports, you know? But uh, they, they have a way to release their energy. And I gotta say, it probably gives them a high. I mean, it does release endorphins to them, you know, like the way some people feel when they do some kind of a workout or go for a run, you know, and this is something that they like to do and they like the music and they, they feel it and they feel connected to other people in the audience. These are musicians that, you know, are probably you know, other than their bands, some guys probably have blue-collar jobs. They probably they have jobs and they're living. And they're getting by and they play their music and they, they have a fan base of people maybe kind of similar to themselves. There's like a new generation of people and, and they're trying... I see them trying to hold the culture together. I think maybe that's what good art could do is maybe cause a spark to make you want to do more.